The last time we talked about Starfield, it was around the 8 month mark in which Bethesda had produced very little post launch support. In that video we explored the fact that the game just was not good enough, especially for a developer that at one point led this industry by example. Bethesda has for a while now been falling behind as other developers in the RPG genre have pushed the medium forward with expansive choice and consequence, cinematic presentation, realistic animation and AI, superb writing and polished fluid gameplay. These characteristics in many regards is what Bethesda has struggled with this last decade. Flaws that have become more and more glaring as time has gone on. Innovation and technological advancements in the industry have in some regards been Bethesda's worst enemy. This opinion is one that many have felt, thus why the user reviews for Starfield have been so divisive. There is just not one specific thing to look at for why Bethesda's first new IP in decades has struggled to grab audiences. Some will bring up the game engine, some will bring up the lackluster world building, some will bring up the bugs, some will bring up the empty planets, some will bring up the loading screen, some will bring up the lack of identity. The one common feeling is that Bethesda needs to be better, and this quality will not be good enough for The Elder Scrolls 6, a game people have been waiting well over a decade for in Bethesda's next big RPG. Some are indeed bracing for the worst. Now with that last video I did on Starfield, the response from many of you was in agreement that Starfield was not good enough and it was aging poorly, but there certainly was a vocal crowd that wanted everyone to know that they think everyone is wrong about Starfield and people like myself are just hating to hate. Such a hater, this is where haters come to cry. I've never seen so many goofballs keep up with a game they hate so much. None of you matter. It's a Bethesda game. They have their identity and don't care for your opinion, and I respect that. It's definitely aging like Gainwine now. Aging poorly? That shit was it. <laughs> Arguing with individuals like this is basically arguing with a wall as they view this mediocrity as just the Bethesda style RPG. Most will acknowledge the flaws I mentioned earlier, but write it off as just the typical thing you see in games, and really not that big of a deal because they still think the game can be fun. This neglects to mention these flaws are many that have followed Bethesda for over a decade, and only been amplified with Starfield's wider scope of a thousand planets in which seamless space exploration is hindered by technological constraints. And certainly, Bethesda Game Studios is is not held to the same standard as the rest of the industry, as they in many regards set the example of the AAA open world RPG years ago. So indeed, people like myself are more critical, far more critical, and that is because I have love for franchises like Fallout and the Elder Scrolls. I want them to be better. But this is a conversation that really began around Fallout 4's launch, and we are still having that conversation a decade later. Todd Howard and May even acknowledge that they want this harsh criticism from fans. These franchises and the time that people spend in the games, they're really, really important to them. You wish people would be nicer, but it does matter a lot to them. At the end of the day, the fans and the consumers, they should, if it's not living up to what they want out of it, we expect that criticism. We need to hear it and we need to get better. And we're really, really welcoming of it. We're actually like our harshest critics here mm -hmm. in terms of all of that. Starfield is by no means the worst video game ever, it's more frustrating than anything else. And the longer you play, experiencing the other playthroughs, the Starborn twist with New Game Plus, venturing on to different procedurally generated tiles, that frustration grows because of the game's lacking identity and constraints. Bethesda though has been working these last few months with better fleshing out Starfield with a series of improvements, many of which I see as welcome additions. In May, Starfield finally got an overhaul to its god-awful in-game surface maps, along with new difficulty options and ship interior decoration tools. Right around the Xbox Summer Showcase, Bethesda announced that creations were coming to the game. There was new bounty hunting missions, a new bounty hunting scanner tool, craftable ammo, melee weapon tiers, and some other smaller gameplay improvements. All of this is good, but it doesn't and has not changed the perception surrounding the game. It also doesn't help that the quality of this content is hit or miss. New Tracker Alliance missions, well that's kinda cool until you realize Bethesda is using its paid mods creation hub to sell official content. It's really bizarre why this just isn't sold as DLC content because that's exactly what it is, but selling a $7 quest, it, it's not a good look. It's nickel and diming, made worse by the fact that the quest line is over in about 20 minutes. You travel to Cheyenne, uh, go to the job board, and are tasked with finding the Vulture as they become a national security threat. This takes you to a different system after the annoying loading screens in which you need to investigate a military outpost where the Vulture was last spotted. When arriving, there is a scout there that, before dying, alerts you to the fact that the vulture is shooting at range. You clear out some of his goons and then go to a cave system nearby and quickly do the same. Gain information and the 
then back to Cheyenne to inquire about the Vulture's identity, which then sends you to the planet with a hotel. You arrive, go to his supposed last location, which is a hotel room, and surprise, it's an ambush as nearby he's shooting at you. After a lengthy walk up to the cliff he's camped out on, you take him out, and the quest is over. It ends in an awkward manner, with it almost seeming like you can turn him into a specific authority, but abruptly it, ju it just ends. There's a few other ways to finish the quest, but still charging $7 for this is baffling in my opinion. So much so that we even had Todd Howard being asked about this pricing, in which he basically admitted they need to be better about this. First of all, I say that stuff gets priced based on, you know, things that we've done before, both in Creation Club and then Fallout 76, and we're always trying to be kind of looking at what else is out there, really make sure we're giving value to everybody and where we're not, hey, you know, we, we definitely will adjust. The one thing I want to say on the Trackers Alliance, that was really an attempt to something we did in Creation Club where we'd say, hey, you get this special outfit and you get this special weapon. We kind of wanted to put them together and then thought, well, let's, let's go the extra mile and wrap those around a quest. But now we definitely see the feedback, right? And it's like not what we want at all in terms of, oh no, this looks like a faction that we're chopping up and then selling for 700 credits at a time. And so I do think we're gonna take a look at that and how we deliver content you know, like that and whether we're changing pricing or breaking it up or, or what we should do there. Now that was the paid Tracker Alliance quest. The other free one also comes alongside issues. But before we continue, this video is brought to you by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Allowing players to control over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations with a wide array of new and iconic options. In War Thunder, you can expect tense and engaging combat, detailed vehicles, realistic visuals, and authentic sound that immerses you as you take the helm of the most powerful machines of our time. For fans of military history and those that just love high quality optimized PvP experiences, join a community of over 70 million players for free on PC and PlayStation or Xbox. Expansive customization options, intricate vehicle damage models, and three distinct modes, each catering to a specific playstyle, War Thunder awaits you on the battlefield to take part in the action. Do so by following my link in the description or pinned comment down below to sign up and get started now. New and returning players that haven't played in six months also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that include multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so jump in today. The setup for this quest is having you use the bounty hunting scan feature to find an associate of the Starjacker, the man that you're trying to hunt down. After a short conversation and some persuasion work, he gives his intel to the chop shop, where this criminal is supposedly hiding out in. After clearing out hordes of enemies and zero gravity, we eventually find a ship key we need for the quest to continue. This is where the quest begins to bug out and leaves me confused for a lengthy period of time. I go back to the ship, unlock it, clear it out, and there is zero indication of what I'm supposed to do next to find the Starjacker. I do find a computer terminal, but everything within it is locked out. So I left the ship eventually and searched everywhere, to then resorting to finding a guide online which highlights that the UI for myself glitched out, and it didn't mention that I needed to find an area above the ship for the quest to continue. This is a clip of my frustration. So anyway, I had to go watch a YouTube video for this to fucking work. Because for some reason this didn't load. Um, I've been walking around like an idiot so confused. But I guess I had to go up here and I had no idea. Just the typical nature of these buggy Bethesda games. Jesus, dude. But uh, because I went up in this area, now I think I can go down into this ship and it'll give me the option that uh, I was supposed to have originally. And watch, I'm gonna go to the computer and it's gonna give me the option to shoot this stupid fucking missile. Watch this. It's gonna have the option. There it is. Oh. <sighs> Every single time, every single time with these Bethesda experiences.
The rest of the quest is whatever, as I just didn't care at that point. It was ruined. This is a constant with these Starfield updates, something that has become Bethesda's reputation. Infamously, Skyrim's main quest was bugged out for me. I needed a mod to fix that. Within Fallout 4, still to this day, a couple of quests never could be completed on my main save because they just stopped working. Fallout 76 had high profile examples of these broken updates, and even earlier this year, the next gen update for Fallout 4 broke the game in a number of ways that still have not been fixed. This is the unacceptable shit that some fans wish for me to ignore, but it's astonishing how buggy these experiences always end up being. Even Starfield's latest update, which introduced a land vehicle, has broken part of the game for me on the Xbox Series X. The vehicle in of itself is yet another example of a nice new addition that probably should have been there day one. Its function is getting you from point A to point B faster, and it does that. Its combat function is not all that great, but you can ram into enemies or shoot an energy blast at them. It drives all right with limited physics, like it'll float in the water, it'll push through snow or sand, it has a useful headlamp, and you can maneuver it around enough with launching into the air, boosting your speed. It is nice to have with some new NPC lines, but its function with traversal is limited as the game wasn't built with it in mind. It's basically Mass Effect's Mako, and that's fine. The problem, however, with this new vehicle update is that for many players, it has made many planets look like this, which, uh... Yeah, not, not great. For myself, a new problem that I've run into is that procedurally generated tiles won't stop freezing. No matter the settings, performance, or visual mode, this is persistent, and when experimenting with the new land vehicle, I was bumping into some animals, testing it out to then a glitch emerging with me being launched into the air, and then the game freezing, and then eventually completely crashing. I did post this clip on Twitter and garnered a lot of responses, which ranged from typical bug Thesda, to well it runs fine on my system, to why do you even cover this game if you're not enjoying it, which is probably the dumbest remark you could make to someone that is covering and reviewing contents of a game. Being the Starfield hater that I supposedly am, I noticed that within this new August update, Bethesda also introduced a new paid quest in their creations hub, and it's probably my favorite gameplay experience in the entire game to date. For $5, you get put in an escape room-like quest line in which you have to really experiment and explore around with the environment uh, to figure out how to proceed forward and ultimately escape. There are, of course, are a few twists, decisions that you make that impacts how the next room will go, hidden information and tools to find, individuals that you don't really trust and different ways to finish this, but this was excellent, and I just really wish Bethesda wasn't nickel and diming like this, as I personally would like to not have this as a precedent in the industry moving forward in which every aspect of a single player game is broken down into different microtransactions. Bad enough what's already been normalized, which surely enough uh, began all those years ago with Bethesda and Horse Armor. What's next to follow for Starfield is its massive expansion, Shattered Space. This will or probably has to be the turning point for this game. Todd Howard earlier this year in an interview with YouTuber Mr. Matty Plays indicated yearly story expansions could be the path forward for the game, although he very much said that it is hopefully something that they can do for a very, very long time, likely linked to the popularity of the game and if enough players are still engaged with it, which right now, Starfield has not been doing all that great. It has been hovering around under 10,000 players on Steam for a while. For comparison's sake, Fallout 4, Skyrim, and Cyberpunk 2077 are all at least double the current player base. But with Shattered Space not being a day one free with Game Pass experience, it will be very interesting to see the level of interest in spending the $30 or so for this DLC expansion. So far, what we know about Shattered Space is that it seems to be focused on House Faroon, probably the most interesting and unexplored faction that the game had introduced. Within the upcoming DLC, it'll be taking players to Dazra, a city on House Faroon's hidden homeworld to investigate a cosmic threat. There appears to be a fight for power happening within this expansion, and all indication is that we'll decide which party rises and the consequences of that decision will play out. Players will be getting a new handcrafted world with new weapons, gear, items, and secrets to be discovered. Early previews have indicated that Bethesda is aiming for a horror vibe with this DLC, which is pretty obvious with the early footage that we have seen, along with of course the more alien feel compared to the rest of the base game. Ultimately, this expansion is unlikely to change perceptions about the base game as it appears to be concentrating on crafting one giant isolated location with a narrative focus that has the scope and scale of other past 
Bethesda traditional expansions. Think probably Far Harbor. So pretty much Bethesda is leaning into what has worked for them to great success in the past, and we will be able to experience this at the end of September. Timothy Lamb, lead creative producer at Bethesda, has indicated that more free content updates will be coming in the future beyond just this expansion. So certainly Starfield's future has a lot more new additions and quality of life improvements on the way, but I do question if that will be enough to change opinions about the game and whether or not most players will be even interested diving in. The problem that Starfield faces is that its foundation is divisive. What I mean by that is that its gameplay loop is met to a lot of boredom from the gaming community. Some of that can be fixed through mods and improvements such as the ones that came this summer, but it doesn't change the fact that the established lore right now is not interesting. You certainly don't have people cosplaying or making art of any of the factions or characters because they are forgettable. The loading screens are anywhere and everywhere with exploration. The character interactions don't feel meaningful, especially when you look at some of the most dated facial animations in gaming. The procedurally generated planets are barren and rely on radiant locations and quests. You'll see the same space pirates on the same outpost on a hundred planets. Combat encounters usually boil down to you dealing with stupid brain dead AI. That's why when people start talking about Starfield having a cyberpunk or no man's sky comeback, it really is important to understand the difference between those games and this. Cyberpunk already had a beautiful open world with great story characters, music, and combat. It was also very fluid with how everything was put together. The problem was the bugs, non-existent AI, lack of interactivity, and a lot of pre-release empty promises. They fixed a lot of that, but it still is far from perfect. No Man's Sky was from an indie developer in over their head, but Sean Murray and Hello Games have spent years with constant free updates, fleshing out that game's content and features. It's actually insane what No Man's Sky has turned into, and the biggest problem with that game day one was that it was devoid of content and things to do. So could Starfield completely turn things around? I just don't think so, but ultimately, it would require years of updates that I don't think Bethesda will keep doing, especially with its current player base size. As it stands, Starfield still remains a mess in many regards. It can still, of course, be enjoyable at times. No argument that its environments can look visually stunning and crafting your own mini-settlement can be fun, but its flaws are glaring and only becoming more obvious as time goes on. Todd Howard was asked earlier this year about Starfield's divisive reaction, and it really showcases the misunderstanding that Bethesda has around the criticism with their game design. Howard, speaking to Kinda Funny Games in May, said that many people have a very specific set of expectations when it comes to Bethesda games. We see a lot of players saying, this is what I want out of Bethesda game, which is to explore a world in a certain way, and Starfield didn't give me that. I prefer the way it's done in a Fallout or Elder Scrolls. And although Howard thinks that's perfectly understandable, he says it's just not the experience Starfield sets out to provide. And I do think for us, particularly me, going into a science fiction game, I want to be able to land on all the planets I want the game to say yes to us, knowing that the content is going to be different than what you've seen from us in the past. The issue with those remarks in the current state of Starfield is that it not being like Fallout or the Elder Scrolls isn't really the issue. It's that the structure that they went for was lackluster and unimaginative. Again, you can't argue that the game has a 59% on Steam based on 100,000 user reviews because people just wanted a new Fallout game, but didn't get that. It truthfully seems like a remark that removes criticism from Bethesda's underwhelming game design and instead pushes the blame onto players not being comfortable trying something new from them, which just is not true. Starfield was hyped up as one of the most important exclusives in years for Xbox. It was supposed to be the game that blew up Game Pass and moved console sales. Howard and Spencer have on multiple occasions spoken about Starfield's ultimate goal to have the longevity and impact that Skyrim has had. Before launch, Spencer even went so far to say that he wanted the Bethesda team to figure out how to make sure this is the most played Todd Howard game ever. That goal of exceeding Skyrim probably won't be reached, even if the game releases eventually on the PlayStation 5. And I actually don't think those goals were realistic to begin with for a new IP like this that yes, is different in many regards to what they've done before. It's game design that I and many others have problems with, but there still is a sizable community that is sticking with it, which might be good enough to grant a few years of support, but I do believe Bethesda would have to gut the game's engine and completely transform it to change the divisive reaction surrounding it to a positive one, which is probably impossible. There is certainly some blatantly misrepresenting this reality as no, the game's opinion is not changing. Recent reviews are actually more negative, and that brief player increase has already dramatically dropped. So as we stand at the one year mark of Starfield's existence, the game has improved, but not enough to really fix the fundamental core issues with the game that likely never will be fixed. It has though been enough to keep those that enjoyed this game day one happy. Maybe that's the realistic expectations Bethesda should have at this point, along with better fleshing out the game's world and lore with its upcoming first expansion, and maybe better exploring its endgame starborn mechanic that fell quite
flat in its next DLC expansion. Gameplay could also use an upgrade landing on an asteroid would certainly be a welcome addition for space exploration which at the moment lacks depth, all in order to build some momentum for the franchise and the inevitable sequel sometime in the future. Still not really sure why I got this cardboard cutout of Todd Howard a couple of years ago, but there are a couple of very clear things. I hope Shattered Spaces is good. I truly do hope that it is like Far Harbor. I am kind of looking forward to seeing how Bethesda transforms that compared to, you know, the base game experience. But more importantly, The Elder Scrolls Six, Todd. You gotta deliver. Uh, we've had a lot of disappointments, a lot of question marks about Bethesda, but I need The Elder Scrolls Six to be good. Waited so long for it, and that sort of devastation, I just, I can't handle it, and I really don't even want to imagine it. So Todd, please, please Todd, deliver for us. And before we do wrap things up, I want to again thank the sponsor of the video, War Thunder. Check it out now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and use my link in the pinned comment or video description to get started. New players or those who haven't played for six months also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles, in-game currency, and more. Anyway, the conversation surrounding Starfield, you'll probably see in the comment section, it's always and it will continue to be divisive. But what is your opinion about the current state of the game? How are you feeling about Shattered Space? Let me know down in the comment section below. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video. Consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you later.